All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming out here tonight. Uh, we are going to bring you the annual town meeting warrant tonight. Um, and this was going to be for the annual town meeting, which will be next week on May 2nd, 2019. One slide, Ron. So one more, I guess. So I do want to just welcome everyone, and thank you for coming again. Uh, I want to thank all the municipal employees, some that are here tonight, for uh, all their hard work throughout the entire year. Um, they do a really great job in town, keeping our roads clean, making sure our bills are paid, and everything in between, safe, uh, ambulance service, all kinds of stuff. And all the volunteers that come out for these boards, uh, planning board, select board, all of the different committees, all these people are volunteers, they're not paid, and they spend a lot of time donating, uh, spend a lot of effort donating their time to the town. Uh, and then, of course, the school maintenance uh, that helps set up all this, the school department, uh, as well as having media that is greatly uh, recording all these uh, meetings and uh, putting them on the web, putting them on cable TV for people that may not be able to make the meetings or get to the meetings, able to see them. So thank you. And uh, finally, I just want to also recognize and thank the Mothers Club for doing the presentation that we're doing tonight. So thank you. And I'll just and context for the annual town meeting, improve voters' understanding of individual warrant articles, and offer voters an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, this forum is not intended to take any vote, favorable or unfavorable, uh, provide any group or individual the opportunity to advocate for a particular article, or to speak against any article. Just an information session. Uh, I can just read through the uh, rules real quick that uh, the select board has put together for public hearings. Um, and there was a copy in the back as well, but uh, the basic ground rules are any person wishing to comment on the issue must sign in. There's a sign-in sheet located on the table up front. Uh, please print your name, then sign and list any affiliation. Whenever possible, please review the proposal prior to commenting. When addressing the select board, and I guess we have microphones up front here, uh, kind of close to us, but uh, you probably even don't have that big of a crowd tonight, but it would be great to come, just at least say your name, stand up, and I'll, we'll, uh, I guess I will call on you tonight uh, for the regular town meeting. Randy will be the one calling on you. He's our moderator this year. Um, when addressing the select board, you must first identify yourself by name, address, and any professional. I think I already read that one. Any affiliation you may have that impacts your comments. Identify the section of the proposal that your comments address. Please limit your comments to three minutes so that other members of the audience will have a chance to speak. Please be considerate of other speakers, whether you agree or disagree with them, and refrain from commenting out of turn. Any person showing disrespect to those speaking will be asked to refrain from further speech or asked to leave. The select board encourages all Hadley residents to attend and vote at the annual town meeting, May 2nd, 2019, a week from tonight at seven o'clock. And thank you for your cooperation. Okay, so um, right now, I can quickly just give you the fund balances. This is often a question that can come up at town meeting and be something that's informative to everybody. So uh, right now our fund balances Stabilization fund is $1,930,604. CPA is $2,089,129. Water reserves is $1,112,447. Sewer reserves is $129,117. Highway media reserves, $181,582. The sewer impact fund is $256,527, and capital stabilization is $5,775. Okay. 
You writing it down? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, first, we will just go into the consent agenda. Uh, this is articles one through six, and at the town meeting, we don't go into these too much. Does does anybody speak to these? I, I forget the moderator says, make sure it's Okay. The town administrator will be explaining these at. Uh, town meeting. Uh, do you want to go through them real quick, David, and say them? So they're highlighted up there, and David will real quickly uh, run through them. Thank you. We started the consent agenda as a uh, practice at town meeting several years ago, and uh, it helps streamline uh, focus uh, focuses people on uh, time and attention on the items that are need of debate. These are non-controversial standard routine housekeeping articles. Um, they, we vote them at every town meeting, every annual town meeting. The first one is acceptance of grants and expenditure of grants, and this means that you're authorizing us to receive the money for grants from grant sources and gift sources, so we don't have to call us the town meeting every time we want to spend a thousand dollars out of a grant. Uh, the next one is acceptance of roads and bridge money, the Chapter 90 money. You get about $260,000 a year. We use that to maintain your roads and bridges. And this one is required for us to access that money. The third one is for temporary borrowing for, by the treasurer. This would be borrowing within the fiscal year in case we encounter a cash flow problem. We never have had one. But this is a handy tool to have in our tool chest in case of need. The fourth one is uh, the, an article that uh, sweeps up money from unproductive or completed uh, projects and returns them to the original pot from which they were um, taken. There's only one this year. We borrowed 130. We borrowed 30,000 for a car and we spent 28,000. So the additional money goes back to the treasurer's ledger. Uh, funds for the water treatment plant membranes. We have uh, 10 membranes that cost a total of $260,000 to replace since a 10-year lifespan on these. So we set aside $26,000 per year in order to meet that preparation when those membranes uh, are in need of replacement. And then finally, we have a housekeeping article for the Community Preservation Act. We need to set aside money for particular purposes, as well as appropriate $2,000 for their administrative needs for the coming in fiscal year. Any questions? David? Uh, article 7 is to um, is a payment of a two prior year invoices uh, one is a one thousand four hundred six dollar invoice to etl corp for water wine replacement work and the other is a 568 dollar to the hadley zoning board of appeals david would like to speak to those As you know, we replaced water lines during the Route 9 widening project from Wally Street to Town Hall. It was a real home run for the town of Hadley. Saved well over $150,000 on that project. Um, when ETNL finished that project, they submitted their final paperwork to the state. The state approved it, and then uh, they submitted uh, uh, an authorization to the town to close out the borrowing on that article. Then the state discovered that they had made a mistake in, in the billing cycle for ETNL Corporation and brought this back to our attention after we had no authorization to spend this money. Uh, we tried to make this go away, that didn't work, so we bring it back to town meeting and it needs to be approved. It needs a four-fifths approval. Uh, then finally, the ZBA forgot to submit an invoice for payment and fiscal year 2018, so we need to bring them up to speed for their uh, service to the town. Any 
Any questions on that? Um, the next slide is for Article 8 and Article 9, um, which are the budget articles. Uh, Article 8, and I, I believe this is slightly different this year than previous years. Article 8 approves the general fund budget, and Article 9 approves the enterprise fund budgets for fiscal year 2020. Uh, significant features of the budget are enhanced general government and human resources, enhanced public safety, level services budget elsewhere, uh, and a con continued commitment to following financial management policies. Uh, one of the big things we have in the budget this year for general government is adding a human resources position to the town and department to the town. There's some shifting around uh, that'll take place, but we'll be adding that function with this budget. And I don't know if the Finance Committee would like to address anything on the budget. Okay. Any questions on the budget lying there? This, uh, there's slightly, there are a bunch of different aspects to this capital plan. Uh, we have basically three different categories, I'll say. We have one category where we're getting money from water reserve, sewer impact, fees, and a raise and appropriate. One category where we are borrowing within the levy, and one category where we are bringing a debt exclusion borrowing to town meeting. So the first one is the DPW needs $40,000 to rehabilitate well number two, and that funding is through water reserves. Uh, DPW requests another $40,000 to add to funds to purchase a septage truck, and that funding is through sewer impact fund. We had had some money in capital last year for that purchase, but it wasn't enough to afford the truck they wanted. So they're asking for an additional $40,000 there. The last line in this category is DPW requests $6,000 for IT upgrades. Funding will be divided in three ways, water reserves, sewer reserves, and raise and appropriate. I can kind of pause there if you guys have any questions. Also, Christopher is here you have any specific questions about the DPW, we can help answer that. What does cleaning the well mean? Uh, Christopher, would you like to answer that? I'm sorry? What does cleaning the well mean? Uh, what that means is... Step to the mic. It's actually better if everybody steps to the mic. Okay, so let's step to the mic. Sorry, I told you not to before, but yeah, that would be easier. Thank you. And we went to school one sixty five Street. I remember. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what does cleaning the well mean? It's a basic explanation of what you're doing when, when you do that. that yes. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, the cleaning the wells, the, the, our drinking water comes from. It. Uh, we go all the way down. Our wells go all the way down to the water table. Mm -hmm. So every every soil is required to clean them because of all uh, other contaminants and other iron elements that we also suck up. And so, the more we, if we don't clean the well, what will happen is we will clog the uh, water pipes that bring the water from down the water table to the treatment plant, where we treat the water and it gets to immediately drinking the water. Okay, now, I, just so we know what's going on there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just did one last year. This is the second one. Okay. I thought this was kind of a rotating item as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, Article Ten. You go to the next slide. Uh, borrowing within the levy. So these three capital requests will be borrowed within the levy, and there are no impact on taxes. Capital stabilization was five thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars. To get these items, we would be borrowing, but that borrowing would take place within the debt we already have within the levy. So there would be no, 
no impact on taxes with this particular borrowing. The first one is the town clerk requests $7,000 to replace voting booths, and those are the booths that we go to and fill in the circles on the forms. Uh, those particular ones are starting to fall apart, and we would need new ones to replace those. Uh, the select board is requesting $6,550 for a capital asset survey, and this is a survey to just document all of the capital items we have in town, whether they're smaller capital items, uh, computers, uh, I'm trying to think of all the different air packs, uh, stuff within the fire department, just bulletproof vests, all these things. Um, just getting an idea of what we have so we have an idea of what all our capital equipment is and uh, can work on replacement plans in the future. Uh, and the last item here is the select board is requesting $10,500 for new office furniture. Uh, as we know, we are making progress on the senior center project. The Hooker School is completely vacated right now. Council on Aging is at the Most Holy Redeemer. Other departments within uh, that were at the Hooker School are now in Town Hall. So in that move, kind of need some new furniture so that people have a little bit more efficient use of their space, as well as putting a new table in the main meeting room uh, where the select board and the planning board meet right now. Uh, so that would all be covered under that article. I don't know if you guys have any questions about those. And then they'll, oh, okay, um, sorry, Article 10, Capital Conception General Borrowing, recap, exempt debt service. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the chart that's on the next one. I didn't get enough time to look at this today. Um, David, do you want to just explain this real quickly so I understand? So there are four uh, borrowing authorizations coming up in the next slide. So uh, just one at the end of each one will have an impact upon taxes for every um, average single family household. But the larger context is that several years ago we came to you with the borrowing from the three major buildings and we said that there would be an impact of $95 for the average single family household. Um, and I just want to illustrate what's happening with the debt. The blue line there is uh, debt that's uh, been authorized already and is coming off. And as we, as, as that debt is retired, we add new things to it. We borrow just enough for the right time in order to uh, keep that impact on the tax, household tax rate at the $95 that we talked about. So debt comes off whenever we have an opportunity to pay more principal than interest, we do so so we can retire that debt faster. So the next article, next slide will show the impact upon borrowing, but keep in mind that the larger context is that we're managing that debt so that the things are as even as possible. Thank you. Any questions on that chart? Uh, that, that could be a little tricky. You, yeah, this is going to be good. Do you want to go? Do you want me, us to go back on the slide? No. Okay. No. This is this, everyone is going to see stock future. If it's possible to say that it's going to be four dollars and twenty-two cents on an average, doesn't really mean anything. If you tell me it's going to be a four percent increase, then everybody can figure it out for themselves. So I would recommend that there, instead of going by the, you, you sound like the used car salesman when you say it's only going to be four dollars and twenty-two cents. I don't think that's what you want to put. That's not the point that you want to get across. I think that the taxpayers in the town of Hadley are smart enough to figure it out that it's going to be a two percent increase, four percent increase, and five percent increase, and that would be better for the individuals to know what is actually going to come out of our pocket. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, 
so th this debt exclusion borrowing is the next item, and this would be, uh, this, this is four items, uh, and basically we have these here because we thought that they, they are important items. Typically we delay capital until the fall town meeting, but we wanted to put these on here for now because uh, DPW is asking for these items predominantly to clean ditches and that kind of thing in town. That's work that predominantly needs to get done in the summer, and so we could make some progress on those items before fall town meeting when this would normally be on capital, and that's why it's on here. But it would require town meeting vote, uh, a two-thirds majority vote, and then it would go to a debt exclusion ballot, which would be in mid-June time if we did it. So that would be that would be where this goes to. So just to go through the items, uh, the DPW is requesting $100,000 to clean and repair ditches. And the impact on average single family household is 422 a year. Sorry, I don't know the percentage of that off the top, top of my head right now, um, but we could add that. Uh, and that, that, that's to, that is some contract work and that kind of thing to help clean some ditches around town. And I can have, if you'd like, Christopher can definitely explain this better than I can right now. Are those uh, town-owned ditches? What's that? Are those town-owned ditches? Or are they private ditches that are? Uh, I can, Christopher could answer better than me. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Could you repeat the question? So the question was, the ditches that we're intending to repair, clean and repair, are they town-owned ditches or, or private? private? Thanks. Christopher, do you mind Again, thank you for the question. Yes, the ditches in town are town-owned ditches. They are, they are part of uh, the drainage system in town. Thank you. Thank you. Give a question. I want to put some clarification. Oh, yeah. Uh, Randy Iser, 2 on me drive. Um, Edwin's question is, does the town own the ditches? Typically, I would say no. Uh, they have, the town has easements over a lot of the ditches in town, but the majority of the ditches, as I understand it, are not owned by the town, they're on private property. And again, the town has an easement to maintain. So just for clarification, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh, so I think it's just better to get that clear that because, because, I mean, you drive through town and you look at all the ditches that are there, and they're usually not private property. So, but the town does have the ability to maintain through these things. Okay. Any other questions on that particular line? Just. You can come up to the mic if you don't mind. Thank you. Nightly Road. Just a question whether or not you're going to show like a map of where those the ditches that are going to be cleaned are because Hadley is a big community. There's a lot of ditches and $100,000 isn't going to go far with the number of ditches in town and people may be more apt to vote for it if they know where it is or what it's going to benefit. Yeah, um, Christopher, do you, do you want to highlight what ditches in particular you were targeting with this money? Thank you, ma'am. Um, the 100,000, um, when we went before the select board, you're right, the 100,000 will not be enough to get a job done. But at, at this point, we know we have zero dollar to maintain the ditches. So we requested 400,000 as part of a program, two, three year program to be able to begin some. And so we have a map. We also have slides, uh, which if it's possible, but because of the nature of where we have, may not be possible to show the slides. We also we present maps so that we can put them around so people can see the locations in town. We, we tend to begin with areas where we have some major problems for now, where complaints have come forth. And so as we begin the process, and then we are able to achieve, we think we are able to achieve some 
results, we plan to go back to the session, and which basically will come back again. Time meeting probably for or next time meeting to give account of where we are and um, if we need more funding. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So, as far as these uh, drainage ditches go, uh, many of them haven't really been maintained in decades. And uh, not only are, is there trees and all kinds of other stuff growing in them, but um, if you look at some drainage ditches in town, they're completely dry. And the reason for that is because the ditch a half mile up the road is so blocked with sediment that it's flooding someone else's field and, and, and there's all kinds of issues. And so I know on, uh, on Nightly on Roosevelt on East Street and so many other areas of town, um, it's, it's a huge issue that's causing property damage to people with flooded basements, flooded farm fields, uh, all, all kinds of other issues. So the, uh, the goal here is to kind of make a down payment on this, to start the process, deal with the, uh, the, the biggest problems first, and, and see, you know, see what kind of progress we can make on, on the issue. Thank you. Okay, any more on the, the cleaning of the ditches? Uh, okay, so the next items, uh, the DPW is requesting $75,000 for a skid steer and attachments. Uh, that impact on average single family household is 562 a year for five years. And also lumped together that one, the DPW requests $60,000 for a mini excavator. The impact on that average single family household is 438 a year for five years. Um, and Christopher, if I'm correct, those are to work on the ditches as well? Yes. And they're kind of equipment that's lighter, that can get into areas that won't tear up sensitive areas as much as bigger excavating equipment would. Any questions on those two things? And then the last one is the DPW is requesting $30,000 for a hot box impact on average single family household is 224 a year for five years and that is an item just so we can get away from cold patch repairs on roads to hot repairs of potholes and that kind of thing any questions on those okay article 11 revolving fund amendment uh, Molly you want to just jump into that <laughs> okay, so uh, Article 11, uh, I can't remember how many years ago now we created a revolving fund um, with the Treasurer's Office um, dealing with tax liens. So this year, uh, the Town Treasurer has requested that we actually increase that fund from $5,000 to $7,500 uh, and also increase the maximum allowable balance um, from $10,000 to $12,000. The bottom line here is we're just having more activity. Um, it's good news, bad news. The bad news is we do have um, tax liens that need to be dealt with. The good news is uh, our treasurer's area is actively dealing with them and doing everything um, in our power to make sure that these are collected appropriately. So in order to do that, we need some additional funding. is uh, unclaimed property, and Joyce is going to discuss that. This is a housekeeping article too. We have uh, checks that have been sent to town residents or other people for uh, refunds and they have not cashed the checks. So this is the unclaimed property. This is usually uh, relating to this. So we're just asking that we can take those checks back and put them back into the general fund. Do we know how much money approximately? Yeah. Approximately, do we know how much money is being involved? Roughly speaking. I don't think, I don't know. Do you know, David? I don't have that information on that for a time. Thirteen, sure, and then thirteen is the private duty detail revolving fund. 
Um, this is to add transfer from funds available, $19,000 into the police detail revolving fund. Um, we have a fund that's already established, and this is for private duty. Uh, what is happening, we've had so many projects in town that the police are not being paid in a timely fashion. So we're just putting more money into this account. We do get this money back with a, I believe, a 10% uh, administrative fee also that's attached with it. So we're just adding more money to that, but the money does come back. So it's not anything that we're giving out. It's just something that's in a revolving account. Okay, Article 14 and 15 are land preservation articles. These are CPA articles um, for, I know I'm going to mess up the name, uh, Sizzla Shazla. Shazla, thank you. Shala, APR program, 173 acres. Thank you for the correction. Appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, these articles authorize the select board to preserve land in North Hadley under State Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program. 360,000 is requested from CPA, Transfer of Development Rights, and Conservation Land Preservation Funds. Uh, I don't know if anyone from CPA wants to, or Conservation wants to talk about that tonight. Andy, do you want to say anything? Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street, Chair of the CPA. Technically, only Article 14 is a CPA article. Article 15 is a transfer of development rights. It's another pot of the money. Um, uh, this is a really great opportunity for the town to preserve this land, and the CPA voted for it 8-0 uh, uh, with one abstention. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you a question? If uh, the, if the land eventually is sold and developed, is that money that we've now put out from the town from CPA, is that given back to us from the sale of the property? Uh, I believe, that's a good question. I, I believe that the CPA money and the transfer development rights money will only be used if the land is preserved. Right, but what if they sold, what if they sold the property the, the money, Paulette Costello, 49, you wrote on the chair of the Conservation Commission. When the, the money that's being appropriated is the town share for the agricultural preservation restriction, this is the difference between what the development uh, price of the land would be as developed versus keeping it farm. Right. Right. So if that land is preserved and then sold, it will not be sold at the development rights. It will be sold at a lower price, and that's the reason that we transfer, we do the APR, so that we can buy the development rights and keep the land affordable for future farmers. So no money ever comes back to the town unless the sale does not go through. And I'm talking about future. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So if they ever sold the property. It would have to be sold to another farmer. <coughs> it has to, by buying the development rights, okay. it stays in under um, farming forever. <coughs> Unless it goes to people, a level. People were wondering that. If yes. they did get the money for that, if they turned around and sold it after receiving CPA money, where, if, where would that be? If they went to the town and then legislature to get it out of APR, then the town would have to be compensated for that. But that's if it would have to go through a vote of the town and then be an act of legislature in order to take the land out of the APR. And just for clarification, part of the uh, article uh, authorizes the select board to enter into what's called a co-holders agreement which would protect the taxpayer's investment in preserving farmland should this property ever <coughs> be taken out of APR and our co-holders agreement will protect our investment and make the town whole. Thank you. All set on that one. Next, Article 16 and 17, Land Preservation, the APR, 40 acres. Uh, 
Uh, these articles authorize the select board to preserve land in center Hadley under the state APR program of $103,864 is requested from CPA and TDR fund. Uh, $83,091 is from CPA. $20,773 is from TDR. And I think with those two articles, that would bring our TDR funds that are currently available, basically. So we wouldn't have any additional funds for transfer development rights until there's more fund, more money transferred into that fund. Would you guys like to say anything regarding that? Um, again, public is never 49. Road from the Chair of the Conservation Commission. Again, the money from the CPA fund would be, and also the transfer of development rights, would be the town's portion to preserve the land in as agricultural preservation restriction, so it can never be developed and it would be permanently preserved as farmland. And again, as with the other one, um, this property would not be, if it got sold, it would have to be sold as farmland, not to be developed. It couldn't be sold to sit there fallow. It would have to be maintained in farmland. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on that? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Andy Morris <coughs> Friedman. I think these two projects brings us over 4,000 acres of protected farmland in Hadley, which was um, Alexander Dawson's goal for the town when we first started doing this. That's, that's great. Um, okay, uh, moving on, Article 18 is CPA map preservation. Uh, the town owns four maps, circa 1740, that are drawn on an animal hide. Uh, $500 from CPA is requested to preserve these maps. And any, maybe you want to say more where they might end up one day? Right, Andy Morris Friedman again. Uh, these maps, which are in Town Hall, um, are one of the two historical treasures of our town along with the Roth Bible um, in the Historical Society. Um, they were discovered in the bottom of a vault when they were cleaning out some offices. Uh, and it has a little sticker on them that says, these are from 1740. Uh, nobody really knows who they, where they're from or what they're made of, uh, although they say they're deerskin. Um, and some person on their own initiative encased them in plastic. Now, some plastic is good and some plastic is not so good. So we thought we could take it to a uh, historical preservationist at Williamstown College and have an assessment on the maps. It's $250 a piece. Uh, then they will present the present, uh, presentation plan, a preservation plan on what to do with the maps. That will be more expensive. Thank you. Any questions on the maps? Okay, Article 19. Uh, CPA for Satirical Park. Uh, Park and Rec Commission requests $32,000 to complete the reconstruction of Satirka Park. Funds would come from CPA. And I don't know if uh, CPA or Park and Rec wants to say anything regarding that. Any any questions? If, either way, if you'd like to, you're welcome to. If not, that's fine too. Yeah. 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 The uh, Zaturka Park project was more expensive than anticipated. Uh, there were studies done of where the stump dump began and end, and uh, the studies weren't accurate. Um, so, in order to complete the park, they need more money. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, Article 20 and 21, CPA Friends of Lake Warner. The Friends of Lake Warner proposed to construct a small boardwalk to improve access to Lake Warner. $1,517 would come from CPA. 
And then Article 21 is the Friends of Lake Warner proposed to conduct water testing at $800, $810 for that would come from CPA. Right, these are two small land preservation projects uh, by the Friends of Lake Warner. The boardwalk, um, there's more and more people using or going to that area of Lake Warner, uh, off Mount Warner Road, and it's eroding the, the uh, Stockbridge. Stockbridge Road, I'm sorry, Stockbridge Road, uh, and the boardwalk will help protect it. Uh, and then the water monitoring, which is actually state mandated and the town isn't doing, the Friends of Lake Warner can do it for much cheaper. Two CPA Hopkins Academy field fields. Uh, Hopkins Academy requests $185,000 from CPA to improve the athletic fields at Hopkins Academy. Um, it could be, or any of you would you like to? Either. Uh, okay. Um, there's phase one of a multi-phase project to uh, upgrade the Hopkins playing fields. Um, much of the project can be paid for with CPA money, but not all of it. Um, once the project is completed, the fields will be available to any town members as long as they're not being used by the school. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Um, Article 22. Right, so as long as there's no school activity, then we will be able to use it. Yes. Hey, can, can I just take another couple minutes? Yeah, sure. Um, I just want to give the figures of the CPA for fiscal 2019. Um, let's see. Uh, the total available for spending is uh, over $2 million. The state distribution was $115,775. We got over $25,000 in interest and $266,140 from town property taxes. The statewide distribution averaged 19%, but Hadley, because they love us, got 43.5%. Really, Hadley falls in a real sweet spot for the CPA. We have the maximum 3% surcharge, so we get extra money for that. And then we're a small town below 8,000 people, so we get extra money for that. And because of those two reasons, we get a much bigger match than most towns or cities in the state. Thank you. The total CPA application is number seven, and they total one five hundred thousand five hundred twelve thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars. Thank you. Okay. Um, Article twenty-three is a utility easement. Uh, this would be a utility easement for the senior center project that's happening right now. Uh, the town needs to approve the new, yeah, uh, this is a requirement of Eversource as a result of amending the existing easement layout. Uh, basically, we have the easement between Route 9 and where the senior center location is going to be across the Legion parking lot. This would be an easement within that easement to get the electric utility from the pole that's located on Russell Street to the transformer location that's at the new senior center location. Uh, so that's what this is for. And basically, without this, this holds up power for the senior center project. Any questions? OK, uh, the next two articles 24 and 25 are amending protected recreational lands and uh, David Bill is going to speak to those. <laughs>
may recall that in uh, October of 2014, uh, town meeting voted to sell North Hadley Village Hall. And uh, we've been working on that slowly. And so uh, we do have a professional real estate company that do that sale for the town, and hopefully get the best uh, or the largest amount of money back to the taxpayers we can. Uh, but as part of that sale, uh, we need to remove the ball field next to the Village Hall from Article 97 protection, which protects recreational land. Uh, basically, the history of that piece of land is a long, long time ago. It was taken by eminent domain uh, and put into recreational purposes for the town. And with the recent uh, court case in Westfield, uh, the courts have decided that yes, probably Article 97 does apply to this ball field. So we need a um, town meeting vote uh, to start the process. Also, the state legislature must approve uh, the removal of the Article 97 protection from the ball field land. Uh, and basically, the, the sale of the North Alley Village Hall is on hold until we can, we can do this. Um, and so Article 25, basically what we're going to do is kind of do a swap and put Zaturka Park into Article 97 protection. So although we are losing recreational land from the protection, we're putting it right back in. So any questions? Okay. Randy Eiser. I just think it would be appropriate to let people know that if Article 24 does not pass, that Article 25 will not be voted on. Is that correct? I think that would be great because there's really no sense in adding the, uh, the protection onto the other land if we're not removing anything. Um, you can do that. Well, so I, I just want, I think people would like to know that ahead of time. You could say that like being the town moderator. Sure. I just, I, I just well, need to know. Yeah, yeah, I need to know the Where select board's board? feeling on that. So can I make a motion then to the select board um, that if Article 24 does not pass town meeting vote, that we will withdraw Article 25 from the warrant. Second. Can I? Uh, second. It is there. Yeah. We need to all stand up. Yeah. Discuss. Just for discussion purposes, what would be the downside of putting the circuit to Park into Article 97 regardless of the vote on Article 24? Is there a downside? If the, the downside would be... Can you go to the The downside... The downside is that... Uh, Article 97 applies probably, but more likely than not, to uh, the ball field at uh, North Hadley Village Hall. If we're going to remove the Article 97 protection from that ball field, we need compensatory protection placed on another parcel in town. So if you moved ahead, if we passed over or defeated the ball field, and then went ahead and placed Article 97 protection on Saturka Park, then at a future date you would not have that compensatory ability elsewhere in town unless we can identify another parcel. So we'd be losing the inventory, so to speak. You'd be painting yourself in the corner. Right. And then we would need to find another property and then we might be able to catch another rights. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, just yeah, yeah, I will. Andy Morris, this, this is the nub of the problem with this idea for me, which is Article 97, the purpose of it is to protect the land that's been given to the town. And so rather than replacing the one acre from the North Hadley Hall, we're going to use land we already have. So we don't have to purchase another acre somewhere else to make up for the ball field. So we're sort of getting out from the restriction that Article 97 is supposed to place on a town by preserving something instead of the ball field that's really already preserved. So we're really losing an acre by, it's not, one, it's not six instead of one, it's six that are already saved instead of one to replace the North Hadley Ball field. Could you respond to that? 
So I see where your, your thinking is going, but um, the Turner Park currently is not protected under Article 97, which is a stronger, I guess, form, I guess you could say a stronger form of protection for the land. So uh, yes, we're removing the North Abbey ball field, but then we're also we're placing that, yes, it's land we already own, the Turner Park, but we're putting that protection on that land so that way if 50 years from now, we decide we don't want to park there and we want to do something else, then we'd have to go through this whole process again through the state legislature or whatever, uh, rather than just the town decide that we want to do something different with that location. A, a related question, do we know what this does to the public access to the pond between the church and North Valley Hall? Does it get rid of the public access or would or, or, or that remain? So the public access is um, uh, south on uh, River Drive. Where the boat ramp is, uh, the access right there at the ball field, there, there really is no access. I've been back there trying to fish. It's, it's a steep drop off. There is, there's no walking access back there. But there was a public way there, and the easement for the public way is still there. Right? That has not been removed, even though. There, there the won't, that won't, that won't be. Away. That's not at the sale of the property. There was no easement there. Right. So if the property is sold, there won't be any public access. Correct. Not through that location. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, and my only comment on that too is that we kind of are put in a bind here because the town voted to sell North Avenue Hall without removing that restriction. So we want to sell North Avenue Hall. We've got to lift that restriction. Otherwise, you know, there's no property there to do any, anything with. Some of them. So it's a bond, yes, yeah. Yeah, the vote was uh, 182, 118, 12 when it got voted. There is still a motion, yeah. yeah. So before, I'm, I'm not certain that, is there right now an easement over that property to the water? I don't believe so, and I, uh, we can we can check the town meeting with. Uh, it, we, I know the real estate company was working on title work and things like that to clarify that, but um, I, I don't have an answer for that. People anymore. assume there is because okay. there's a easement. Okay, well, yeah. Listening to Andy, it sounds like he thinks there is one there, and I know I surveyed that property mm -hmm. and went to, back to day one, and I don't see any easement there, so I just don't want any confusion in that thinking that there is an easement there now that doesn't exist, even though people might be using it. Well, we'll uh, see if we can clarify it in time for town meeting. Uh, one comment on North Avenue Village Hall, uh, the reason this needs to move forward sooner rather than later is because this has been sitting since 2014, and we basically removed all of our maintenance budget for the building because we've been planning on selling for so long, and we're kind of at that point where it's not going to take much more. We're going to be looking at some large expenses to either repair or replace things in the building. If we're going to keep it or we need to get rid of it, so we're, we're not paying for it that we're going to sell off. So. Um, Pauline Kazdeba, 49 Lee Road. I believe the easement that is being referred to is under Article 97. Article 97 places a conservation easement on the property so it can't be sold. So the whole property. The whole property. So it's, it's a conservation easement guaranteeing that it won't be developed. So when you remove it from that, you're removing that easement on the property. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so we had a motion to basically get Article 24 is voted down to just remove Article 25 from the warrants. We have a motion and all that is made. <laughs> I think I'll be able to um, Okay, so articles 26 and 27 are the adult use marijuana articles. Those should be, uh, <coughs> well, the first article, article 26, 
strengthens an existing bylaw that prohibits the use of marijuana in public spaces. Uh, that is presented by the select board, um, maybe authored by the police chief, I believe. Uh, so, John, would you like to speak to that? Prohibiting 
adult use marijuana growth or sale. There is a very different structured route that has to be followed. So this is a route to impose local controls. The other option is to have no local controls. Could we impose local controls in a year from now or six months? And would they be effect would they take effect? Because if, if this doesn't pass, it's gonna it's out of the, the town of Hadley's hands. There's no local control. By and large. But could we implement something down the road? Yes. Thank you. But that would not impact anybody who opens for business between the close of town meeting and when we next address it. To, to Edwin's point, if this thing gets voted down and the, town, the doors open in the town of Hadley, there will be such a mad inrush, it will not be funny. I deal with this, these people on a daily basis. They're always looking for new places to go, so we don't want to have the door open if we can help it. The other benefit or option of having a regulatory bylaw in place is that we can ease it up at some point in the future. If it turns out that our concerns are perhaps overblown, we can increase the area of allowed cultivation. We can address letting people grow it outside. But uh, as a practical matter, just need better to start small and work up as the situation warrants. Martin Vega, there's this Golden Court. I have a question. Don't know who to address it to. I'd like to, you could uh, elaborate a little bit on the difference or distinction, please, between public spaces and, for example, say, uh, public housing authority. Please. Thank so you. you're asking about the, uh, not about the zoning article, but about the. Uh, Actually, just more generally before we say the just the idea of public spaces versus you know, like public housing authority, which is not a public space. And I just want to make sure I'm correct on that, and I want to get that on the air. Yeah, we'll probably you. have to uh, consult the police chief for that, that technical one. Can you uh, at, at go ahead? It'll probably be at town meeting because he's not here to see. Well, so then there's a possibility, it sounds like, people living in the housing no, authority. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making a judgment call on it right here. Can we make a distinction between public spaces and the housing authority? We have, to, we have to check with the police by, police chief. <laughs> and, and probably, and probably the housing right. authority. Yeah. What the legalities are and how much you can have and how much you can grow. Yeah. Yeah. There is a certain, there is an amount um, that's legal or not legal. So, <laughs> Article 26 is the one that talks about public consumption. Yeah. And uh, it does include a series of definitions, but it doesn't answer your question um, about whether housing authority it does say uh, uh, public buildings uh, or any area owned by, leased, or occupied, or otherwise under the control of the town, or, uh, or any place to which members of the public have access as invitees or licensees. Um, so I would assume that your like the well, the center, the office center is public, but individual private units are private. That's how I would interpret it. But again, uh, this I think we'll get clarification. Article twenty six. We we'll search this and get clarification yeah. for uh, for Tom meeting for next month. We also have our legal yeah, this uh, came, representative here. He might be able to clarify that as well. Yeah, this one came from the police chief. Article twenty six came from the police chief. Article twenty seven is the planning board one. I understand. So I just wanted to just put it out there because there was some confusion, I think, with some local residents walking their animals in the public housing authority, calling it a public space, like as if it were a park, and it's not. And I'd want to get someone to tell me that's not the case. Uh, should we also put this off until next week? Yeah, probably. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, the comparison to the state laws that you quoted and the restrictions that the town has put, do we have a uh, comparison sheet of the restrictions you put on compared to the restrictions that the state has implemented? Uh, by and large, because the whole, the whole thing is quite confusing. And these are some of the questions that I have asked. Okay. And I've directed them to you before. What, uh, <laughs> What we have done, uh, by and large, is we try to incorporate by reference the state law. So the state law is out there. The regulations are out there. They are limit secure. They impose security requirements on growth facilities. Um, most of what we have here is in addition to what the state regulations. This, this is above and beyond the state minimum. Yeah, that, that's what I'm looking for. What, what we went up and, up and over and above uh, compared to the state line. So for a little comparison sheet that we showed people next week, I what they're voting on. I don't think we, we didn't approach it that way. Well, so, I, mean, I know you did, but there's a lot of confusion with But this that's is the vibe. Right. This is, what is here is our is ours yeah. over and above state. And if it is voted down, it will still go by the state law. Correct. Just a free for all the time I have. Correct. The biggest limitation will be the uh, there'll be no restriction on how much you can grow. There'll be no local restriction on how much you as an individual farmer can grow and there will be no restriction on where you can grow it. Uh, that's that's the big thing, uh, probably. And interestingly, <coughs> most of the people who came to our meetings uh, were concerned about growth facilities. We hardly have a peep about uh, uh, retail locations. Yeah, yeah it, if this was a pass, could there would that not restrict the amount of retail locations, or was that established by the board as far as the uh, community agreements. Uh, I think you do have a bylaw we on, have a bylaw. on limiting it to 20% of the, 20 of the uh, yeah. alcohol. Yeah, uh, so I think you have adopted that. So that's in there, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so that would limit retail, but there would be no restrictions, no effective restrictions on uh, growth. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it, this is a good starting point for the town and we can roll from there if we want to uh, this bylaw but it seems important to pass this to protect ourselves and be conservative to start. Anyway. Okay. Any other questions on Article 27? Okay. Article 28 is the petition to amend the state seal, flag, and motto. Uh, petitioners are requesting that the town ask the legislature to change the state seal, flag, and motto. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Girls Down Street. Um, I brought this petition article here um, because of the support I need in the Native American community for it. I wanted to clarify a few things because a lot of people have been saying I'm trying to rewrite history. This is the fourth single that um, Massachusetts has had, and um, a lot of the seals have had been problematic. The main point I want to make is that. The Senate and House resolutions create a commission um, to review the seal and make recommendations. The provisions shall consist of an executive director of the Commission on Indian Affairs, which shall serve as a chair, five members appointed by the Commission on Indian Affairs, or a millennial of descent from the tribe. Um, at the time of settlement, the executive director of the Massachusetts Historical Commission or a designee. The executor, executive director of the Council on Arts and Humanities, or designee, the chair of the Massachusetts Arts Commission, or designee, the chair of the Mass Cultural Council, the House and Senate chairs of the Joint Committee on State Administration and Regula, Regulatory Authority, and two persons who shall be appointed by the governor. After the commission comes up with its recommendations, 
It will have to give a detailed report to the House of Representatives and the Senate, and it will have to be voted on. And I believe the gover governor is also going to be involved in this. So we're not rushing it to change the seal. We're actually conferring for the first time with one of the parties represented on the seal about what is a seal that makes sense. Um, we've had a native person um, not particularly accurately depicted. Um, I, I can go into that a little bit, if you'd like, on the seal without any input from native communities. And the people I know, there are three people in Hadley that I am acquainted with are fully in support of this um, resolution. These are people with native heritage, though not Hadley, not of Hadley descent. Um, I lost my thought here just a second, but the, I work in human services and we have a motto and it's nothing about me without me. And basically we've had a flag in a seal depicting Native Americans um, that had absolutely no input from the Native people's involvement. In fact, the body was metal, modeled on a skeleton that was dug up in Winthrop, Massachusetts. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody had dug up one of my ancestors to use as a model for somebody's um, artwork, I might be quite upset about that. Um, th there's a lot of cultural appropriation which we just tends to go right by us when we look at that seal. <coughs> the head of the person in the seal is um, modeled after a Chippewa from Montana. There's, it, it's not historically accurate. And the other point I wanted to make is we're not eradicating history, we're filling it out and adding some truths and um, perspectives of other people that we haven't included in the history before. And I think while we're considering as a town um, having a diversity and inclusion committee, this would be a very good first step to those toward those goals of inclusion um, and respect to people whose voices haven't been heard before. So I'm urgent, I, I'm willing to talk to anybody. You can contact me anytime and I'll provide you with plenty of reading material. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Morris, with 45 Roosevelt Street. I just want to say that all over America and indeed Massachusetts, people are reevaluating the iconography that we use to express our history. In the South, they're tearing down uh, statues uh, that honor the Confederacy. Four separate towns in Massachusetts have already voted in favor of the submission to reevaluate the symbols on our state flag and seal. I think it's time that we had a seal and flag that represents our values and not the values of uh, 19th century America.